Hi, welcome to our Food Web Notes. Um, when you were born, you were a teeny tiny little thing. You got bigger because you were able to eat, and as you take in the food, your body breaks that food down to build it to what you need to get bigger. You also get your energy from the food that you eat. We're going to take a look at food webs and see how all the different things in an ecosystem are connected. Now, in any food web, we need to start at the bottom with something that is a producer, something that can take um, non-food materials, water, carbon dioxide, and produce and make food. So in this picture, the grass or the wheat would be our uh, producer. The sun's energy is being converted into food energy. Now, if the zebra comes along, we know the zebra is going to eat the grass. The way we represent that is with an arrow. The arrow goes from the grass towards the zebra. So the pointy end of the arrow goes into what is doing the eating. So the grass goes into the zebra. Uh, if we bring the lion along, I think we know what the lion's going to eat. The lion's going to eat the zebra. So we need an arrow that goes from the zebra into the lion. Uh, now, as Mufasa was explaining to Simba, all things that live when they die go back to feed the producer. So when the lion dies, the decomposers will take the mass from the lion and return it back as the basic nutrients that the grass needs to be able to grow. And that completes the cycle. That creates the circle. <laughs>
um, aquatic ecosystem um, just to take a look at some of the roles. This is very simplified. On your paper, make sure that you copy down the arrows the way they appear on this. Pause if you need to. Um, we're going to use this to take a look at the different roles. Now, anytime you want to start, start at the bottom. Now, this picture has the producer at the bottom. It doesn't have to, but they normally do. The easiest way to identify your uh, producer is it's going to have arrows going away from it, but it doesn't have any arrows coming to it. It's making the food and it is eaten by other things. So down here, the phytoplankton that has three different arrows going away from it, but no arrows coming to it, makes it easy to identify it. So remember, the arrows point to where the food goes. So the phytoplankton is food for herring, zooplankton, and baleen. They're our producer. Now, anybody who's eating the producer, we know we can identify as a primary consumer. So in this case, the herring, the zooplankton, and the baleen, because they eat the phytoplankton, they can be labeled primary consumers. A secondary consumer is anything that is eating a primary consumer. Now, this is the first place we're going to see some overlap. In our secondary consumers, notice the herring and the baling well were primary consumers, but they can also sometimes be a secondary consumer because they're eating the zooplankton. Now, this is important to remember. They're in here. Any food chain is one path through the food web. The food web is everybody put together. If you're eating a salad and a steak, while you're eating the salad, you're in the role of a primary consumer. When you reach over and take a bite from the steak, you're now acting as a secondary consumer because you're eating the cow that ate the grass. That would make you a secondary consumer. Tertiary consumers, up here, anybody who was eating a secondary consumer. Quaternary, we see now that we're getting close to the top. And in this one, we do have the killer whale, the orca, is a fifth level consumer in this food web. Again, it's easy to find our top level consumer because they have arrows that come towards them, but no arrows that go away from them. They are the hunter. They are not the hunted. Everybody else that's in between the top predator and the producer are both hunter and hunted. They're looking to, food, to eat something for their food, but they're also trying to make sure to avoid being coming somebody else's food. Now, let's take all these off the screen and let's bring them back into and put them on our food pyramid. Remember, on your food pyramid, write down the names. Don't take the time to draw and draw pictures. Just write down the name. Our producer, we only had one, and that was our phytoplankton. Our primary consumers, we had three. We had the herring, the zooplankton, and the baleen whale. Secondary consumers, we had everybody that wasn't the zooplankton. Basically, we have the orca, the herring, the leopard seal, the penguin, and the baleen whale. Tertiary consumers were the orca, the seal, and the penguin. Quaternary consumers were the orca and the seal. And our top fifth level quinary consumer would be the killer whale, orca. Pause if you need to. Refer back to your picture that had the arrows for the food web if you need spelling for any of the organisms. All right, when we're looking at either mass or energy, we have what's called a 10% rule. We know that all of what's in one level can't be transferred up to another. You eat food, but you don't use 100% of the food that you eat. Um, that's why we need toilets. But also, that food that you're eating, if you're eating the cow, when you eat that steak, you're getting mass and energy from that cow. But that cow, while it was alive, used its own food for its own mass, but also used for its own energy. So only 10% of what's at one level as mass or energy is available to be transferred up and support the level above it. Now, what that really looks like for us, um, remember when we're tracing mass, everything up here, the mass moves up, but the decomposers are also going to be able to return matter as mass back down to the producers. Energy goes in the same direction. Uh, with one exception, we do sometimes show um, the source of that energy coming into the producers. If only 10% is available to go up, and we can't, we know from the law of conservation of energy, destroy energy, then where does it go? 
most of it is released as heat energy. Think about you when you walk around and move and eat and breathe and everything you do when you're consuming and using energy, your body is constantly giving a lot of that off as heat energy. So does everything else. The 10% rule, here's how we use it for calculations. Um, only 10% of the mass or energy available at one level can be used to support the next level. So if I know how much energy is available at my producer's level, let's say the producers had a million kilocalories of energy per square meter, um, how much energy could be used to support the primary consumers? Easy enough, 10% means divide by 10. So if I take one tenth of that million kilocalories, I would only have 100,000 kilocalories to support my primary consumers. Now that means that I'd have 10,000 kilograms uh, kilocalories for my secondary consumers, 1,000 kilocalories for the tertiaries, and only 100 kilocalories to support those quaternary consumers. Um, so 10%, 10%, 10% keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, you can also pretty quickly see why we don't tend to have too many ecosystems that have um, 6th, 7th, 8th, or certainly not ninth level consumers. There's very little energy that would be available for that kind of an organism to support itself. Likewise, we can work going down the pyramid. If I know how many calories or how much mass is necessary at my top level, if I multiply by 10 going down, I'll be able to find out how much energy or mass has to be available going all the way down to the producers to support that top level consumer. So if I had a quaternary consumer that let's say had a mass of 200 kilograms, um, what's the smallest combined mass of tertiary consumers that would have to be there to support it? Well, times 10. So 200 kilograms times 10, I'd have to have um, going down to 1,000 kilograms in my tertiary consumers, which means I'd have to have 20,000 kilograms for secondary, 200,000 kilograms of primary, and 2 million kilograms of producers. Very quickly goes up when you go times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. So there have to be a lot of producers to prov provide enough mass to support 200 kilograms of a quaternary consumer. Um, Make sure that you double check your notes, go back and replay the video if you need to. Um, have a great day.